Thank you very much and thank you for the invitation. I'm very glad to participate to this conference. I will uh, present a joint work with Michael Ruzhansky about quantizations uh, in a harmonic analysis framework. I will start uh, with a couple of uh, words about the more general situation and then we will go to nil potently groups and I will try to present you a the connection between two different quantizations. The one uh, taking into account the irreducible representations of the group and the other one uh, insisting on the dual of the Lie algebra. So I start in a naive way from the Kohn Nuremberg quantization in Rn. And uh, we all know what's about. And the problem would be now to replace Rn with a group a nice one, a reasonable one, having some structure. Uh, and this can be done in several ways. So uh, basically we think of G as a sort of um, configuration space for a system. And to speak about uh, pseudo differential operators, you need some dual variables. And choosing these uh, dual variables uh, will impose a mathematical structure on the problem. So the standard way to do this was somehow to, to think of the cotangent bundle of the Lie group. This can also be done for manifolds which are not groups. And what you get is obviously very interesting and it is standard sub subject in, in the field, but there are some drawbacks. And the, basically the drawbacks are coming from the fact that the theory is local. It uses local charts to model the manifold um, by copies of Rn, of neighborhoods of the origin in Rn. And uh, this forbids us to have a global calculus. Uh, so basically what you, you have and you control is a principal symbol. You don't really have algebras of symbols and the symbolic calculus. In addition, the group structure is obscured in such a treatment. You, if you, you, you treat it essentially as a manifold. Okay, there are plenty of things you can do, but this is not uh, the subject I will refer to. So other interpretations of the, uh, do you see my, uh, my mouse here? Yes, thank you. Okay, so here you have uh, a copy of Rn, which should be interpreted in some way. And two other possibilities are to, to consider the, uh, that it is, the Pontryagin dual of the group Rn. This means the space of characters. Uh, and the second one would be to think that it is a dual of the Lie algebra of the group Rn. Rn is so particular then uh, very many approaches become the same thing and they are somehow invisible. The differences are invisible. Okay, so let us try to implement the first point of view for non-commutative groups. And this could be called global quantization with operator valued symbols. So now you would like to treat a non-commutative group which is reasonable enough. And reasonable would be uh, to be type one, let's say on unimodular, but this is not really necessary, locally compact. It will have a hard measure. Without a hard measure, you don't have integrals, you don't have plenty of tools, so you don't really hope for more of this. I will not define type one because this is quite technical. Basically, it tells you that uh, you have a Planchet theorem and you have a Planchet measure and the nice behaved uh, but complicated Fourier transformation. Okay, so now I have to think of the characters. You don't have characters here in the non-commutative framework. You have irreducible representations and uh, by taking the quotient with respect to unitary equivalence, you have what is called the unitary dual of the, the group. And this is a basic object in uh, harmonic analysis. The group being type one, you have also a Planchet measure on this group, which is complicated, which is not very explicitly defined. This is somehow a weak point of the theory, but for reasonable groups, people have worked out the, the form of this uh, Planchet measure and the form of this unitary dual. So you can hope in particular cases to have uh, rather concrete examples. 
In particular, in particular, you can have parametrizations as uh, in the talk of uh, Jonas previously, and this will uh, uh, come down to a more concrete level. So now what the symbol is, the symbol should be defined in some way on the group. The variable X belongs to the group. The variable Xi refers to the unitary dual. It is an equivalence class of representations. But of course, the Hilbert space of the representation should also be taken into account. So basically, to, I choose a um, represent, uh, realization of the unitary class, which is a representation, a unitary one, and the deducible, taking values in the unitary operators of a Hilbert space. And it comes out that you have to interpret these uh, symbols, these families of objects indexed by the, by the phase space as operators acting in this uh, inner uh, Hilbert space, in the Hilbert space of the representation. And the good formula, nice formula already widely accepted is the following one. You have to quantize this type of symbols by an operational calculus, so the differential calculus associated to this phase space. And here you have things which generalize the previous uh, formulas. In particular, because some of the ingredients are operators, A of X and Xi is an operator and the representation is an operator. To come, to, to come back to, to scholars, you need to compute a trace. And of course, this is possible for certain classes and you can extend this type of uh, formulas uh, in uh, for worse situations by certain techniques. I will not uh, refer to technical matters. To be, to, to, to like this formula, you should think of particular cases. So if G is a billion, all the irreducible representations are just characters, they are one dimensional. So the Hilbert space is invisible, it is one dimensional and you don't need a trace and you are in the framework of, uh, let's say, periodic uh, pseudo differential operators, uh, pseudo differential operators on the torus or things like this. More particular, if the group is Rn, you know what the character, what the characters are. Well, you know this in plenty of other situations, but characters on the periodic group, for example, are quite complicated. In this case, in Rn, you have the usual linear expo imaginary exponentials and you come back to the con nirenberg formula so at least this particular case is covered in a very, very clear way um, previously before studying this for locally compact groups uh, it was uh, this was done for compactly groups by plenty of people Brzezinski, turunan virs and others and they developed a very detailed uh, calculus, including symbol classes of Hermander type and things like this. The harmonic part is ensured by the Peter Weil theorem, which describes in a very concrete way the uh, unitary dual in such a case. In particular, you know that uh, the inner Hilbert spaces, the Hilbert spaces of the representations are finite dimension. So the symbols computed in points X and Xi will be uh, square matrices. Another direction is the direction of uh, graded nilpotent uh, groups, which was treated by Fischer, Ruzhansky, and many, many other collaborators. And once again, the calculus is very complete and there are plenty of uh, applications. And there are already two very well-written books uh, about this. So um, let us go on with, for the moment, with a general case in which you cannot hope to use smooth classes of functions. So because you don't, I will just mention th several things that you can do, but just as keywords without entering in details, because my topic would be uh, different. It will be uh, referring to the nilpotent case in, in more detail. So you can adapt uh, the calculus to tau quantizations, implementing uh, different orderings of the operators. And tau can be a very general parameter, not just uh, a number as uh, in Rn. 
Um, in particular, certain groups uh, allow you a symmetric, a vial type of quantization. You can also use usual distributions which were considered in RN and in other cases as Wigner or the Fourier Wigner distribution. And you can use them both to justify the form of the calculus, of the pseudo differential calculus, and to investigate. There are plenty of connections with uh, sister algebras, with cross product sister algebras, in which basically the group acts on a compactification of itself by extending the self translations. And um, this gives you a topological dynamical system which has a calculus which is more or less equivalent to uh, the pseudo differential calculus. I cannot give the details. I indicated here some, some things involving the Schrodinger representation, which can be turned by a Fourier transformation to the pseudo differential calculus. Let me say you just that uh, this has two possible advantages. On one hand, instead of just pseudo differential operators, you can define families, uh, equivariant families of pseudo differential equations, asking the group to. Um, to work, to, to act, not just on a, uh, one of its compactifications, but also on some more general uh, topological spaces. So you arrive at formalists as uh, uh, random pseudo differential operators and things like this. On the other hand, you can use the sister algebras and their uh, properties to do spectral analysis, quite concrete spectral analysis for the outcoming pseudo differential operators. Other topics that could be, uh, that are already covered are coherent states, Berezin Toeplitz anti uh, calculus. There are in ship incipient uh, forms of co-orbital modulation spaces. One can also treat non-unimodular non groups by implementing in the formulas two basic uh, new ingredients, which are obviously the uh, modular function and especially the uh, the flow more unbounded operators. I will not refer to this. And you can also twist the calculus in such a way to generalize magnetic type operators on Rn using group cosines. So I mentioned all this here, but I will forget them. I will go to the nilpotent case now. So if the group is nilpotent, you have a very nice uh, framework because the group is diffeomorphic to its group uh, to its uh, Lie algebra by the exponential method. I will uh, define log to be the inverse of the exponential method. This also happens for more general groups, which are called exponential. But uh, for nilpotent groups, in addition, you have a good correspondence between the Lebesgue measure on the Lie algebra and the Haar measure on the group. They are the same if you use the change of variables, which is the, the exponential. So basically, you think that you can think that the group is uh, the Lie algebra on which you consider, instead of the uh, sum, a polynomial composition law, which is obtained by a change of variables using the exponential and the logarithm. And obviously, this is the BCH uh, formula. The Baker Campbell Hausdorff formula. It is polynomial in the variables. Okay, so now we go to quantizations in which uh, the dual object would be the dual of the Lie algebra. And the first uh, try would be the following one. It is a bad one. So this formula is not very far from the Korn Nuremberg quantization. But notice that if this uh, dual variable x uh, calligraphic, which belongs to the dual of the Lie algebra is here, you need to, to use a duality using uh, the, the Lie algebra. So if, if uh, small x and small y are elements in the group, you need to convert them to elements of the Lie algebra. And you can do this by the logarithm, applying the logarithm uh, function. And of course, this is very naive and very bad because it is just what you obtain from the Korn Nuremberg uh, uh, quantization on the product of the Lie algebra with the dual of the Lie algebra by making a change of variables. So you don't see the Lie algebra 
outside its role of being a vector space, you don't see the group structure, it's not interesting, it is not new. So a good uh, version of this is the following one, in which you do some manipulations at the level of the exponential. You use this logarithm of y minus one times x instead of the difference of the logarithm previously. So actually what you change is the type of exponential you are using. You are using a, the uh, imaginary exponential of a polynomial and not of a linear function. And this works rather well. Uh, it was used and known before, uh, especially for functions f which do not depend on x. It was uh, studied by Glowatsky and Melin and uh, Manchon, uh, and others, uh, but only for um, invariant operators, for convolution type operators. They did not allow uh, variable coefficients. Okay, so this is one of the objects where we will refer to, and it can be uh, transformed to uh, quantization on the product of the uh, Lie algebra times its dual by using the modification I indicated uh, before. So once again, you will have an exponential in which you have a polynomial composition law defined on the vector space, which is the Lie algebra, but also taking into consideration the uh, successive uh, commutators, of course. Needless to say, this uh, development is finite because of nil potency. Right? Okay, so we will try now to compare the two quantizations. And I copied here the two formulas. The global uh, one involving the uh, irreducible representations and the last one involving the dual of the Lie algebra. And actually they come out to be at least at a formal level equivalent uh, because you can, both of them can be obtained from the calculus of kernels of integral operators by applying in different directions to different partial Fourier transforms. This can reduce to, to, the, to the fact that in both cases you can compute the integral kernels. And the integral kernels of the first calculus are connected in a rather direct way to the integral kernels of the second. Okay, so what are the Fourier transformations which are involved? The first one is the complicated one, the one given by the uh, the very general form of the Planchet theorem. It is given here and it uh, has indices indicated where you start and when you, where you arrive. It can be defined on various spaces of functions or distributions. I define it here unitarily on L2 of the group, taking values in a L2 space associated to the unitary dual, which is not a group, and this L2 space is uh, actually a direct integral over the Hilbert-Schmidt operators. You have also other versions uh, of spaces on which this Fourier transform acts. And it is a rather complicated one. It's, uh, it involves the Planchet measure, which is quite an implicit uh, object. Um, on the other hand, you can go from the Lie algebra to the dual of the Lie algebra by the usual Fourier transform. This is not enough because you always want to, to start with the Lie group. So you compose this one with the exponential and you get nice formulas. So the first formula is the formula for the um, global Fourier transformation. Um, an expert in sister algebra would say that it is the integrated form of the unitary irreducible representation pi xi. The inversion formula involves a trace, and this is the reason for which you will have a trace in the pseudo differential calculus. And the other two uh, direct and inverse Fourier transforms are here. They are modifications of the usual ones just by composing with a logarithm, which by the way, it's a polynomial and it is not a logarithm at all. Um, and this makes things uh, nonlinear, more interesting and things like this. Okay, so now you, you would like to use these Fourier transformations to make connection between the two uh, calculi. And um, 
Here you have a commuting diagram. So finally, you want to arrive to operators in the Hilbert space L2 of G. Um, I indicated the situation for Hilbert Smith operators to be precise, but this can be done in a larger framework. So you arrive here on one hand by applying the global uh, calculus with operator valued symbols, starting with functions on G times the unitary dual. You can also arrive here by uh, starting with functions on G times the dual of the Lie algebra which is indeed a cotangent bundle of the, the cotangent bundle of the Lie group. And you want to make the connection. You also have uh, the space of kernels, uh, which are defined on G times G. So from here, you can go to operators by the integral uh, kernel calculus, which is not in the diagram. Anyhow, you have partial Fourier transformations here and here. You don't touch the first variable and the second variable is transformed in two different types of dual variables by using the two different Fourier transformations. And the fact is that this diagonal commutes. So if you want to ignore this part of the diagram, you just focus on, the, on this diagonal in which you have the identity times an operation L, which is a composition of, of a Fourier transform with the inverse of the other Fourier transform. So the connection between the two calcula is, is given here. Um, you get the one of the quantization, applying the other quantization to a transformation of the first symbol and the transformation is a double Fourier transform in the second variable. Okay, this can be useful and it, we used it, uh, for example, to transfer uh, the classes of symbols uh, discovered and studied by Fischer and Ruzhansky in the book and in a couple of articles. They can be transformed isomorphically to another class of uh, symbols useful for this uh, calculus involving the dual of the Lie algebra. I cannot give you the details because there are plenty of preparations to be done concerning graded groups and uh, the Rockland operator and things like this. This can be done. Unfortunately, for very many reasons, the transformation L is too complicated. It is, it is not explicit. It, it involves a double integration and very often uh, it is not so easy to use. it. And in addition, you expect that there is something e uh, simpler behind this. And uh, to do, to, to get such a thing, you have to use Kirillov theory, which makes a nice uh, connection between the unitary dual and the dual of the Lie algebra. So I just recall you that there is an adjoint action of the group on the Lie algebra. It is an infinitesimal form of uh, the inner automorphism of the group. And by duality, you define the quadjoint of uh, action which is very very important in harmonic analysis and especially in Kirillov theory. So you have a dynamical system, you have orbits, this is the orbit uh, generated by a point in the dual of the Lie algebra and uh, these are very nice, they are close of manifolds, they have a polynomial structure, they allow Schwarz spaces and they are symplectic spaces, they are symplectic leaves in a Poisson algebra, a global Poisson algebra defined on the dual of the Lie algebra. And Kirillov theory works very well, for, especially for near potent groups. It tells you that uh, the unitary uh, dual of the group, let's say the space of uh, irreducible representations is isomorphic, is homeomorphic with the space of orbits with respect to this quadjoint uh, action. And uh, this is done in a non-trivial way, but anyhow, for any uh, unitary equivalence class of representations, you have an orbit which is in, denoted in, in, in such a way. Now, for, for each uh, quadjoint orbit, you have an inner vile calculus, which was uh, basically obtained by Pedersen um, generalizing the usual vile calculus uh, defined on R to the power to, uh, 2n. 
And uh, let us not forget that r to the power 2n can be seen as uh, a quadrant orbit of the Heisenberg loop, having dimension 2n plus 1. So this uh, would be a generalization. You have the quadrant orbit corresponding to a representation. It has an invariant measure, a symplectic measure called very often the Liouville measure. And you can define a pre-dual, which is necessary for a sort of inner Fourier transformation. So the pre-dual would be a vector subspace of the Lie algebra, such that its dual can be seen as diffeomorphic with the orbit. This is uh, the reason to call it a, a pre-dual. In addition, it is a vector subspace, so it has its uh, Lebesgue measure. And uh, the Weyl calculus in this case could be called the Pedersen calculus, is a unitary isomorphism between L2 functions on the quadrant orbit and Hilbert space, uh, Hilbert Schmidt operators on the representation space. It is given by certain formulas which would collapse to the Weyl calculus in the standard case. I also indicated the, the inversion, which gives you the symbol of the Pedersen calculus. And uh, notice that you have a good trace of such operators, which are given by integrating the symbol. And this an, is an ingredient in the uh, result that I will indicate immediately. Now, the result that follows is only true for flat quadrant orbits. So very, very quickly, let me indicate what uh, what this is. The quadrant orbit is called flat if it uh, satisfies the equivalent conditions. Um, in general, the isotropy Lie algebra of a point on uh, the orbit contains the center of the Lie algebra. If they are equal, we say that the orbit is flat. Another possibility is just to notice that the orbit should be an aff affin space in the dual of the Lie algebra, a concrete one. And the third possibility is to say that the representation giving rise to this orbit is square integrable modulo the center. And we shall call the group admissible if there is a flat quadrant orbit. And it comes out that if one quadrant orbit exists, almost all the others are also uh, flat. Uh, they are generic in some precise uh, sense. They have maximal dimension. And in addition, the groups having uh, a flat quadrant orbit are quite a lot. Uh, any Lie algebra can be embedded into an admissible one. And there are admissible examples in every dimension. And in addition, in such a situation, the predual defined previously is unique for all the flat quadrant orbits. And it gives you uh, the composition of the Lie algebra. It is a complement of the center of the Lie algebra. So now with these um, objects already introduced, I can give you a precise and uh, nicer form of uh, the mapping L, which was a composition of two different Fourier transformations. The one making the connection between the quantization. And it comes out that you have to do the, the following thing you take a function defined on the dual of the Lie algebra and you want to compute its image by L. Well, this function can be, reduced, can be restricted to any quadrant orbit. Being restricted, it becomes a symbol for the Pedersen calculus, for the Weyl calculus uh, defined on this quadrant orbit. And this is an operator, the, exactly the operator you would obtain by applying LB and computing it into Xi. I recall you that this should be an operator. And I also gave the inversion formula for this. Okay, uh, so uh, in such a formula, you never see integrals and you see a fine connection between uh, a fine way in which the while calculus on each of the quadrant orbit comes into play to connect the, the two representations. If I will have time, I will present you this corollary, but let me pass to the basic result, which is the following. It tells you that you can compute uh, the same operator in two quantizations using different type of symbols. You start, for example, with capital I, which is defined on the group times the dual of the Lie algebra. 
and you have to go to another symbol which is operator valued and defined on g times the irreducible representations and to do this you take uh, the scalar symbol you restrict it to points in the configuration variable and uh, quadrant orbits in the dual of the real algebra and this would be a fine symbol to which you can apply the Peterson calculus. You apply it and you get the symbol which is operator valued uh, for the other quantization. So this is a connection and this connection is nicer, it is conceptual and it is easier to, to use to make transitions from one calculus to, to the other. Uh, now, as many people remarked, in particular as in the presentation of uh, Jonas previously, one could be unhappy with the presence of the unitary dual which, is, which has to be worked out and uh, with the uh, Planchel measure which is quite implicit. There are possibilities to, to replace them on one hand by Z open Zariski uh, subsets of some Euclidean space by using parametrizations and uh, in such a parametrization the uh, Planchel measure would become a density times the Lebesgue measure and all I told you before can be done also in this uh, concrete version by using uh, parametrizations of Pukanski, Moore and Wolf and uh, you get uh, a version of this result having more concrete uh, objects. And of course, uh, you have, if you are lucky, you would um, have sim more simplifications. For example, if the Lie algebra has one dimensional center, uh, the unitary dual can be seen as the real numbers minus the zero point, and the variable can be seen probably as the inverse of the Planck constant. And here you have uh, a family of Weil Pedersen calculi which depend on the quantum parameter h bar, and they are involved in a nice way in, in the formalism before. And there are many other uh, explicit examples, maybe very close to what Professor Wang uh, uh, exposed, which are not exactly as, that, uh, as in the Heisenberg case, but they can be worked out and you can understand the formula at the end. And there are other things to say, but uh, I don't have uh, enough time for this. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you very much for this very nice talk. Uh, are there any questions or remarks for Professor Mantuyu? Uh, I, I have a question. Hmm? In, Please. In, in the start of your talk you said you have a calculus for cross products of c-star algebras mm -hmm. for this do you need to make assumptions of how the group acts on the on the on the on the algebra do you need topological freeness or something like that uh, no i don't uh, so basically the the most uh, trivial way is to think that you start with the action of the group on itself. So this one would be very nice, transitive and free and everything. Mm. But in such a way, you only get compact operators. You get a cross product, which is isomorphic to the compact operators, uh, not general enough. But you can, uh, to, to implement coefficients, which are not small at infinity, you can act on compactifications on the group. So in such a case, you no longer have freeness. You have a very large orbit, which is the group itself. And you have a boundary at infinity, which could be very, very complicated and very interesting, uh, modelizing uh, anisotropic behavior of the coefficients of your future to the differential calculus. So in such a case, uh, freeness is not true at infinity, and the system is only topologically transitive. You have a dense uh, open orbit. And you can go further applying this to any topological space on which the group acts, but then you will have a vibration of this topological space by orbits. And on each orbit, you have a sort of, uh, of such a pseudo differential operator, and they are packed together in an equivalent uh, way, as in the random uh, operator theory. 
but could it be any algebra? So, so you gave specific examples of the algebra GX. Yeah, no, sorry, the algebras are commutative to have a topological spaces uh, mm -hmm. behind this. Mm -hmm. I think that I, if I am stubborn and if I try to do this for non-commutative algebras, what you see is still possible and you can also switch to sort of pseudo differential calculus, but it will not be so close to our hearts. It will not resemble too much to a pseudo differential theory. So my algebras are commutative. By Gelfand theory, they are given by a, a locally compact space. And this locally compact space can be more or less arbitrary. Uh, to get families of equivariant pseudo differential operators, or if I want to stick just to one of them, uh, the space should be topologically transitive, so more or less a compactification of the bit. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to ask a question. Yes, please. So, in your work, or say based on your work with uh, Sandoval, where you extended this to certain classes of solvable groups. Um, do, um, do you think uh, one can hope to um, define analogs or generalizations of uh, Hermanda type symbol classes on these groups? I think so. I started to work on the nilpotent case, which is simpler, in which obviously you, you could push the symbol classes uh, define you refer to the dual of the Lie algebra or to the unitary? So sorry, sorry if you, um, yeah, I wasn't specific enough. So in the sense of uh, Fischer and Ruzhansky, uh, so operator valued symbol classes, but they use Ruckland operators, which uh, somehow substitute the symbol of uh, the Laplacian on Rn, or say generalize it, uh, but say without a, a graded structure, um, I, yes, I, I at least would know how to do this. So on one hand, uh, you would like even for nilpotent groups to exclude, to, to work also for non-graded groups. Yes, for example, and then on and you, uh, you solvable also, groups, but that's of course. Uh, yes, so, so you don't have the Rockland operators to, to help you to measure behaviors and things like this. Say, say for example, even uh, non-gradable homogeneous groups. Uh, I think it might already be challenging, but then maybe you've got some yes. ideas. Well, the or... answer is that everybody would hope to do this. And I started at a certain moment to, to try to do such things. And the solvable uh, situation would be more general, more complicated, but probably conceptually still uh, abordable. Uh, this does not exist in English. Uh, you can uh, try to do it but it is complicated. Anyhow, parameterized versions at the first look seem very complicated. They need plenty of uh, ingredients. But finally, you have not to, to, to fight the implicitness of the Planchel measure. And this could, be a, this could be nice. So in principle, I think that this is possible even beyond the uh, boundary of uh, nilpotent groups. But I did not do it. and. Well, if you would like uh, to exchange uh, thoughts with us, uh, me and yes, Michael, yes. and uh, and even for a given, even in the given situation of a graded group, probably there there are many classes of symbols, each one having its uh, own interest. So, for example, I'm not sure. I think that I did not compare the Fischer Ruzhansky classes of symbols with those obtained on the dual of the Lie algebra after doing the transformation uh, and used by people as Glovatsky, Manchon, uh, Melin. I'm not sure that they would be the same. So this proves somehow that there is no unique uh, good choice for uh, SM rho delta symbol classes. But I'm not sure of this. Mm -hmm. This surely deserves uh, further study. Well, thank you for your answer. Mm -hmm. Okay, any, long, any more questions for? Well, if not, so let's thank the speaker again. And um, so then 